Oh my god, my voice keeps doing this thing where like every time I don't talk for a while it just sounds like super like not like there. Like okay, there we go. Now it's like settled down. Settle down! Also my hair is getting way too long but like it makes my neck look smaller. <laughs> what was my opening? Okay, so now, now, one, okay. Hey guys, today I am bringing to you a video that's been highly requested. And like, yes, everyone says that, but listen, <laughs> this video was actually highly requested. I got so many comments on YouTube and um, Tumblr messages about this topic. So I decided I would finally make a video. Today I'm going to be talking about how I got involved in research as a high school student. So we're going to break it up into a few parts because there is a lot of parts to this topic. Um, and I've got some notes written down here so if I'm looking that way you get the gist. Okay. So the initial contact. That is how I first contacted my lab and got accepted or like started working with them. It wasn't like an official program or anything. There are a bunch of programs for research that's honestly probably the easiest way to go about it, although it's also the least flexible way to go about it because usually a program will be like, okay, eight weeks in the summer, okay, ten weeks in the summer, and then after that you don't really, especially for like programs that aren't near you in location, so like I know MIT has one that's like really prestigious, um, and like if you don't live near MIT, like after those 10 weeks are done, like how are you even physically going to be able to continue working? Anyway, that's a tangent. Okay, so how I did it is I'm pretty lucky that I live near a research university. It's a public state school, but it is very strong in research, specifically computer science, but I did not decide to do computer science. So I knew nothing about computer science at that point. Um, but yeah, so I live near a university. I also live it's a little farther away, but I do live near two labs, and then I do know people that have um, worked on research in the city. Yeah, so how I got in touch with my lab was I just went on the website of the university near me. So now I'm just I'm gonna I'm just gonna do for example, if I wanted to work at Columbia University, which is pretty hard, like aim lowered. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but like, for real though, like, it really doesn't matter where you do research as a high schooler. It just matters that you're doing it, because like, research itself is like, already like, a next level extracurricular. It's like, wow, you're actually doing real things in the real world, you know? So it doesn't, it really does not matter where you do it. Um, as long as like, your work is like, really impactful. Okay, so if I wanted to do like bio research, Columbia University biology, right? Okay, so then I'm getting the Columbia University Biological Sciences Department website. Okay, so I clicked on that and then right at the top there's going to be a faculty button. This is really for like most universities will have this button and then you can just scroll through and then you can click on like the work that they're doing and you can read about it. They ha they usually have like a nice little short description of what they do and then they have a list of their publications so if you want you can like search up their publications and then read the abstracts online but yeah so that's like how you look for professors that you would want to be in touch with. Right so then you would want to email them a nice professional sounding email where you're like hi my name is this, and I am a high school student here, and I am really interested in the work that you're doing. Then you want to list some examples of like different extracurriculars you're doing that are related to the work they're doing, or different classes you're taking in high school. So like for me, I talked about how I was taking AP Bio in school and how we were doing a chapter on NeuroBio. So. That was one. And then um, as far as extracurriculars went, I talked about how I was in the science program that let you pick classes and I picked um, modern psychology for that fall quarter and then spring quarter I picked neuroscience. 
and so those were really I really did not have that much like background on psychology as a whole I did self-study AP psych that year because I wanted to prep myself for research um, but like I feel like yeah professors totally get that you're in high school and you can't really have done much in the field yet so yeah and then you also want to talk about like some specific things in their research that you're either interested in or curious about or have questions about um because they want to like see that you've actually looked at what they do and have and like care about them specifically and it's not just like a mass email that you're sending out to a bunch of people that being said you should probably send this email to a couple professors at a time and you should definitely like give yourself a lot of time to do this whole process because there's absolutely no guarantee that a professor will reply to you at all if they reply negatively that's already like you should already be grateful to them that they're taking the time out of their very busy days to like give you a sorry we're like too full right now we don't have um we don't have room for another person whatever like they're taking time out of their day to reply to you to say no right so yeah just so yeah, you should give yourself like months in advance before like the time period that you want to get started working in a lab. Just because it's like, it's a hard process if you're not applying through like an actual program. So yeah, like for, and then for like the emailing process, you want to email a couple at a time and then wait like a week or two. If you don't get any responses or if your responses are all negative, then I'd say you can email out a few more wait another week or two, go on with the system. For me, I was actually pretty fortunate in that, like, one of the first emails I sent out, I got a reply six minutes later from the professor being like, hi, thanks for your interest. We're actually looking for research assistance right now, so I will forward this email to my lab manager, which he did, and then I got in touch with his lab manager and we set up an interview and it was like a really chill interview. It was like 10, 20 minutes just like reiterating everything I wrote in my email um, about why I was interested. On to the next part, getting started. So I got started at my lab the summer before junior year. Yeah, I actually like technically started uh, like that spring, like that May but I was only just like going in and like sitting in their lab meetings and like reading papers every week like that was all I did until the summer then that summer I actually like started coming in and doing hours and I think I did I did 14 hours a week that summer which I like wanted to do more but they like capped me on that because usually they had their RAs doing anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a week um, which makes sense, like, because they were undergrads, but for me, I had, like, nothing else to do that summer, so I would go in for 14 hours a week, and in order for me to get, like, more familiar with the equipment and the field in general, they had me start working on a lot of the lab's ongoing projects, so I was just, like, helping out with data entry and, like, photocopying interviews, and I did get to run some participants on the EEG and fMRI studies as the summer went on so that was really cool and it helped a lot for when I actually got started with my own project because I was using a lot of those techniques for running participants there um blah 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 blah, blah. what else oh yeah my lab was pretty big so I never really ran into the professor a lot because <laughs> I oh yeah my hours were all like during the weekends or like in the evenings on weekdays because I had school like during the daytime um so yeah my professor his schedule was the entire opposite he was only there during school hours obviously because he would also be teaching then um so yeah I never really ran into my professor so come the end of the summer I email him about like ideas that I had for my project or not like ideas ideas just like topics I was interested in and then he was like cool our postdoc is working on a bunch of the things that you mentioned, so I'll put you in touch with him. 
So I met in person with the postdoc and we talked about ideas and at the end of that meeting we had kind of a rough idea figured out for my project which we started that spring semester all right i'll move on to the collecting data section so spring semester of my junior year is when we started collecting the data for my project which was not ideal because i was very busy spring quarter and i had all ap exams sats actually sats i well no i my sat i took it in january and spring semester started in january for university right that sounds about right yeah yeah so okay very busy i'll set to take the act anyway so, but this is just something that had to be done. We both agreed that like since so our main group of participants were going to be college students. So since we had to use college students, there would be a lot less of them over the summer. So we had to do them spring quarter, spring semester. I keep saying quarter because Stanford runs on quarters. Anyway, so yeah, every time I was at the lab spring semester, I was running participants for my study, which was fun, but we had to run 95 participants in total, so it was a lot. <laughs> and then as far as writing my paper goes, I started doing background reading spring quarter while I was also collecting my data, I was reading papers. So um, the postdoc sent me like five papers to start out with that were like specific to what we were doing and then he was basically just like take these five papers look at the work cited of each of them and then pick some papers from the work cited and read those and like do that again and just like branch out like that so in total i ended up reading about like about 20 papers before i even started writing so yeah, doing like background reading is really important. So then I spent most of the summer analyzing the data, which the postdoc helped me a lot with, um, and then writing the paper. So I actually finished my intro pretty early, I'd say, um, but I didn't finish the entire paper until like mid-October which was cutting it really close to like the Intel deadline, which was in November. And like for those of you interested in applying to Intel or now I think it's called Regeneron, but like basically your paper is not the only component of it. You also have to like write a bunch of mini essays about your project and about your goals as like a future scientist or whatever. So yeah um it's a lot more work than just the paper so keep that in mind um start the process early i actually i reused part of my common app essay for one of the longer essays because i was just like i can't do this <laughs> um so yeah i made it just in time for intel i did not submit to siemens first because they actually don't have a social and behavioral sciences category, um, especially if you're like using human subjects. I don't think they accept projects like that. Um, and second, I wouldn't have been ready for that deadline anyway because it's like a lot earlier. Oh, I also got to present at a bunch of local fairs during senior year. Um, that was a lot of fun. I like made this big poster and got a like print it out on this huge printer, really cool stuff. <laughs> oh, and I just got published in a journal this past spring, so huge shout out to my lab for supporting me with all of that. That was a long process, um, but yeah, there you have it. I hope this video wasn't too long. Please leave any questions, comments down below. Uh, I can definitely, if like there's anything I didn't like cover completely here, I can do like a little bit of a update video if you guys um, like any clarifications or if you, you just want me to like go more in depth in some part, um, feel free to send me um, messages on Tumblr, 
asking questions also if you want to remain anonymous. And I just started using my Twitter actually. I made it some time ago, but I don't know anything about Twitter, so I only just posted to it like last week for the first time. Um, so feel free to tweet at me if that's more of your scene. Instagram's always fun. Comment on my pictures. <laughs> I don't know. Follow me on anything you want. Uh, it'll be a fun time. All right. That's that. Um, Yep. Bye. <laughs> Today I am bringing to you- Are you serious? Okay, our phones did not work all summer and then we just got them fixed and now it just like rings all the time and it's usually just like telemarketers so I don't usually pick them up because I'm like- because I'm just like if you really had something important to say to me you would call my cell phone honestly like I don't know. I was trying to like toss it over my shoulder so I was like that like natural like flowy look. Am I doing anything right ever? No.